Abby Johnson from Bryan, Texas.
And I really believe that. And that's why I got into it. I wanted to prevent unintended pregnancies. I didn't want women to be in that type of situation. And I had heard Planned Parenthood preach it over and over and over again. I was their media gal. And I had said it hundreds of times on radio shows and on TV. And that's what I really believed. And then the economy went really, really south. And every meeting that we went to, I noticed that, you know when something is negative, like your money is negative, there's a parentheses around it? Well, that number in the parentheses kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, we were like at $660,000 in the hole on our family planning side. So the side that we're supposed to be pushing, right? <laughs> and I noticed that every month that kept getting bigger. And, but they would say, but never fear, we have our abortions keeping us afloat. Because our abortions are over $1.6 million. $1.6 million. Their abor abortions were over budget. There are 12 health centers in the affiliate that I worked in. Only two out of the 12 provided abortion services. Two out of 12 health centers had brought them $1.6 million over budget in abortion services. Planned Parenthood provides abortion services only for the money. They don't care about those women. They don't care about reducing the number of repeat abortions. They want women to have repeat abortions. They don't want women to take those birth control pills correctly. They don't want women to come in and get that depo shot when they're supposed to. That's not what they want. They want women to come in, they want that contraception to fail, and they want that $500 cash in their pocket. Now let me tell you a little bit about the way the money works with abortions. And this will kind of prove to you how much money Planned Parenthood makes. So with an early first trimester abortion, doctors only make about $75. So if a, a center is charging about $500, the doctor is only making about $75, and the antibiotics they, they use are about a dollar a bottle. And other medications maybe cost about five bucks. So they're making about, let's say, a little over $400 in profit on every single abortion that they provide. <laughs> Hence the $1.6 million. So at these meetings, they would say, Abby, we really got to strategize and figure out how to get more abortions in the door. How can we get more women to have abortions? So my particular facility that I worked at we only did abortions every other Saturday, surgical abortions every other Saturday. And they said, you know what, that's not enough. We need to be doing the medication abortions almost every day. Because that's easy. It doesn't require a doctor to be in-house. So they don't even have to pay a doctor. So that's $75 that they're paying a doctor that's more money in their pocket. They don't have to pay a doctor for medication abortion. So they said, you know what, we're going to start offering the medication abortion almost every day of the week. And we can start doing, you know, anywhere from 6 to 10 a day. 
And let me tell you something. If the if the spots are open, women will come. If the spots are open, women will make those appointments. <coughs> now, that bothered me. And you might say, really? Because you were in this for five years, so clearly you didn't have a conscience. Well, <laughs> that bothered me, okay? Because I said, you know, hey, wait. And I told my supervisor, I said, no, wait a minute. Aren't we supposed to be in this for prevention? And she said, Abby, you have got to get your priorities straight. Your priority needs to be abortion. Because that's where the money is. If the money's in abortion, forget family planning, we've got to get the abortions in the door. So that's when I think my heart began to change a little bit. And I really started to question this organization that I thought I was going to retire with, right? Then on September 26th, we had a different doctor uh, come to our facility. And he's a private practice abortionist. He uh, lives in Austin, Texas. Uh, he actually lives in the facility where he performs abortions. He's an odd guy. Um, he has his own private practice. All he does is abortions. All day long, he does three in the morning, three in the afternoon. It's just him and his wife. She's also, she practices with him. And uh, he had come down that day to help us out. And in his, pra in his practice, he only does ultrasound-guided abortion procedures. So let me kind of explain the difference. Um, most places, like these abortion facilities that are, I can guarantee every single one of them here in New York, um, and it, all Planned Parenthoods do what they call a blind abortion procedure. And what that means is they have the probe that's going to go into the uterus and they just blindly poke around in the uterus with the suction, okay, until they feel like they've hit a wall. That wall is the top of the uterus, okay? So there's a much higher risk of uterine perforation. There's a much higher risk of that probe going straight through the uterus. Okay? But that's the fastest way to do it. And time is money for Planned Parenthood in these large abortion facilities. They want to get women in and out as quickly as possible. So they all do these blind abortion procedures. But if we're talking about abortion and the best way to do an abortion procedure, the best way to do it is to do an ultrasound guided procedure because you actually see the uterus up on the screen and you see where you're going with the with the probe okay <laughs> but that's the only way that this doctor does these procedures is through ultrasound guidance so but in order to do the ultrasound guided procedures you have to have somebody in there actually holding the ultrasound right because he can't hold it and do the procedure so he called me in to assist with the procedure. I'd never done, I'd never witnessed this before, never seen anything like it before in my life. I didn't know what to expect. So I went in and uh, found the uterus. The woman was uh, 13 weeks pregnant. And 13 weeks, when you're 13 weeks pregnant, the baby's formed. There's fingers, there's feet, there's toes. Everything is formed. All systems are formed. Um, and so what I saw, and when you're going to do an ultrasound guided procedure, you actually need to see the full body. Okay. So I got in the right place. He said, I need to see the whole body. So I got in the whole plate. I got in the right place. I saw the full profile of the baby. So I saw from head to foot, um, side profile of the baby. And I saw, the pro I saw the probe that was hooked up to the suction going into the uterus. And I saw it go in and I saw, I saw it come up next to the baby's side right here. And I saw the baby kind of jerk away from the probe. And that surprised me because for years when women ask me, and they do ask, is my baby going to feel this? I told them no. 
Good. Because that's what Planned Parenthood had told me. And so I couldn't believe it when I saw the baby jerk away. And then I thought, maybe I didn't see that right. So I, you know, I kept looking. And then, you know, as he kept going in further with the probe, I saw the baby's feet start kicking and moving away from the probe. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe that for five years, all of the thousands of women I had counseled and the hundreds that had asked me, is my baby going to feel this? And I had said, no. They don't feel anything. And I was watching this baby fighting to get away from that ultrasound, I mean, from that probe, that suction probe. And it was something that I didn't want to watch. I didn't want to see what was going to happen next. But I couldn't take my eyes off of it. And when they go into the uterus with, with the probe, the suction's not on. So they flipped on the suction. And I, I don't know if you guys were watching what was happening on the ultrasound machine over there. And you may not really know what you're looking at if you look at it. But you can see this perfectly formed little backbone <coughs> on a baby. It's really cute. <laughs> And I could see that on this baby. I could see the little backbone. And when they turned the suction on, I could see this baby, I could see the backbone twisting and turning as it went through that, that tube. And then it was gone, just like that. And at that moment, it was like a flash went through my head and I dropped the ultrasound probe and I thought what am I doing what what has just happened and I immediately had an image of my daughter <coughs> and the ultrasound that we had of my little girl when I was 12 weeks pregnant and I remembered the, the profile of her face, and it looked just like that baby I had just seen in that screen. And I thought, oh my gosh, and then all of a sudden I realized I'm going to hold the ultrasound probe. So I scrambled and I, I grabbed it, and everybody's looking at me like, what's wrong with you? I grabbed the ultrasound probe, I put it back in place, and at that moment, I thought, I will never do this again, ever. And I put my hand on this woman's, I had my hand on the ultrasound probe, and I put my other hand on this woman's belly, and it was almost like I could feel the life that had been taken out of her womb. It was the most amazing and horrible feeling I had ever felt in my life. You know, I have to be honest with you, I, for five years, I was a trained POC technician. POC stands for Products of Conception. Yes, it is true that they reassemble body parts after the procedure's over. Yes, I participated in that. Yes, I saw little hands and feet in a dish. That never fazed me. I think it was shocking the first couple of times I saw it. But I, people say, gosh, wasn't that just, I mean, you saw those little hands and didn't you say, oh my gosh, what am I doing? No, because I didn't think that that was a living baby. I never even considered that that baby in that woman's womb before it was in that dish was a human being. I never considered that that was a life in that woman's uterus. I never considered it 
until I saw that baby fighting for its life on that ultrasound screen. Never. So to see it outside of the womb, not living, didn't affect me. Because I never thought it was living in the first place. So those gory pictures, the gruesome pictures, that never bothered me. That never fazed me. And I can tell you, it doesn't phase half the women that come in and out of the clinic for abortion procedures. Because the clinic workers on the inside can excuse those away. And they can say, oh, I don't know where they got those pictures. That was like an eight-month baby. You're only like five or six weeks. There's nothing even formed. It's not even a baby yet. Yes. They can excuse those pictures away. It is not until they see that sonogram that they realize there is something living in my body. I am growing another human. That is the coolest thing that a woman can do is grow Now, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, like I just left that day. I went home that day. I told my husband about what I had seen and told him I didn't want to go back there. But my husband's a teacher and uh, I was not say very much. I'm in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so I thought, you know, um, we're dependent on two incomes. I've got two weeks until we're going to do surgical abortions again. So I've got two weeks to find another job. I thought that was reasonable, but it's not. Not this economy. So I thought, okay, I'm going to find a job in two weeks. Sorry. It's on the internet all the time looking for another job. <clears throat> and um, first week went by, pretty, pretty uneventful. Second week came, it was that Monday. I knew we were going to be doing abortions on Saturday, and I thought, the clock is ticking. I still haven't found a job. And I was sitting in my office, I was crying, and I was watching these women coming in and out of the clinic. They were, we were doing medication abortions that day. And I knew that in their little bag, they had the pills to abort their baby. And I was thinking, God, where am I going to go? You know, all of my friends are either working here with me, or they're involved in the pro-choice movement, and they are not going to understand what is going on with me right now. They're not going to get it. So where am I going to go? And I looked out of my window, and I saw two women praying outside of that clinic. And I thought, okay, I guess that's where I need to go. <laughs> so I got in my car. And I drove to their center. This is only about two, two houses down from where our facility was. Intentional. And uh, I walked in, and you know, I was just a mess. And um, after they picked their jaws up off the floor, um, I told them my story and told them that I didn't want to work there anymore. And uh, they just, you know, were shocked, but embraced me, loved me and said, let's get to work. We've got to get you out of there. Whatever we can do, we've got to get you out of there. So I went home and told my husband. I said, yeah, you're not going to believe where I went today. <laughs> and he said, the Coalition for Life. That's what they're called. And I said, yeah. Probably I didn't think you would guess. The Coalition for Life. And uh, he said, I knew you were going to go there. And I said, don't care about me. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I said, you know, I said, I I said, I think we need to pray about it. We prayed about it that night. We prayed about it together. And I said, after we got done praying, I said, you know, I don't know if you feel this way, but I just really feel like we just need to take a leap of faith, and I just need to quit my job. And he said, I'm thinking that too. And that was the first time ever in our lives together, in my life personally, that we put all of our faith in God and said, God will provide for us. And so I did. So I went in the next day. I put in my resignation. Um, and then a, a couple weeks later, when Planned Parenthood found out that I had now done a 180 on them, 
Uh, they filed a restraining order and a lawsuit against me. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I was a little surprised, but not really, because that's how they operate. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, they're nervous all the time. They're nervous about the pro-life movement. And uh, that's why they have your picture. All of yeah. They're scared. So, um, I, you know, so we went to court, and they said, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about what happened. They went to court. My boss testified. It was horrible for them. Uh, my boss testified, and they said, you know, they said, well, do you have any proof? that she took anything confidential, that she has anything that she's going to release. And my boss actually stood up there and said, no, but she has it in her head. <laughs> <laughs> and my lawyer said, well, Ms. Santos, how would you like us to extract that information? <laughs>
I know that it is very difficult for you guys here in New York, particularly, <coughs> because um, you don't have a pro-life state uh, support. No. You don't have a pro-life government here in the state. We sure as heck don't have a pro-life president. <laughs> <laughs> But abortions are not happening in our White House. They are not happening in our Congress. They are happening in those abortion mills right down the road from us. And that's where we need to be, counseling these women one-on-one, -on -one, changing their minds, getting them in the doors, having them talk to our wonderful counselors, getting them on the table, showing them that there is life inside of their body and being a woman, being a mother, is a blessing, not a burden. And that's what we need to be showing them one after 